Today I'm going to read a passage from the book Munich by Robert Harris. Leggett took out a large white cotton handkerchief and wiped his face. It would not do to turn up red-faced and perspiring. If there was one sin that was frowned upon above all others in the private office, it was appearing to be in a flap. He climbed the steps into the narrow, shadowed, soot-blackened cutting of Downing Street. On the pavement opposite number 10, a group of reporters turned their heads to follow his arrival. A photographer raised his camera, but when he saw it was no one of importance, he lowered it again. Leggett nodded to the policeman, who rapped once hard with the knocker. The door opened as if of its own volition. He stepped inside. It was four months since he had been seconded from the Foreign Office to work in Number 10, yet each time he felt that same sensation, as if he was entering some gentleman's club that was no longer fashionable. The black and white tiled lobby, the walls of Pompeian red, the brass lantern, the grandfather clock ticking its leisurely heartbeat. Somewhere in the depths of the building, a telephone rang. The doorkeeper wished Leggett a good afternoon and returned to his leather coachman's seat and his copy of the Evening Standard. In the wide passageway leading to the back of the building, Leggett paused and checked himself in the mirror. He straightened his tie and smoothed down his hair with both hands. He braced his shoulders, turned. Ahead of him was the cabinet room, its panelled door closed. To his left, the office used by Sir Horace Wilson, also closed. To his right, the corridor that led to the offices of the Prime Minister's private secretaries. The Georgian house exuded an air of imperturbable calm. Chamberlain took his seat behind the microphone and spread out his speech. His hands were shaking. One of the pages fell to the floor and he had to bend stiffly to retrieve it. He muttered, I'm wobbling all over the place. <laughs> he asked for a glass of water. Leggett poured one from the jug in the center of the table. In his anxiety, he overfilled it. Beads of water stood out on the polished surface. The BBC engineer asked them all to sit at the other end of the room. Outside, over the garden and horse guards parade, darkness had fallen. Big Ben chimed eight o'clock. The announcer's voice came over the loudspeaker. This is London. In a moment, you will hear the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Neville Chamberlain, speaking from number 10 Downing Street. His speech will be heard all over the empire, throughout the continent of America, and in a large number of foreign countries. Mr. Chamberlain. Beside the microphone, a green light glowed. The Prime Minister adjusted his cuffs and picked up his speech. I want to say a few words to you, men and women of Britain and the Empire, and perhaps to others as well. His tone was euphonious, melancholy, as inspiring as a dirge. That's all you get.